I published the circuit yesterday. It's an audio pre-amplifier and I was very interested in more possibilities and uh, thanks to my YouTube viewers uh, I had a, a quite good uh, suggestion about to work with audio uh, with op amp circuits and I want to refer to the comments in the text box of my um, sorry the comment section uh, of my earlier video how to make a, a good properly working uh, op amp uh, I had a command that the TL81 uh, could be a, a better choice because of course it has a field effect input anyway I have some uh, uh, TL81 uh, uh, op amps and perhaps I don't know that exactly you have to do an experiment you can uh, replace this circuit with a TL81 of course read the data sheet etc etc anyway uh, uh, what I wanted to uh, do today is uh, to uh, elaborate this circuit with the 741 much better uh, in such a way that I had a uh, audio amplifier of say 1 up to 2 watts and I succeeded took some time anyway pin connections of the use transistors and the advantage of uh, the 741 op amp was uh, that I did not need so many components to make a good amplifier. It was my first experience with an op amp and, and transistors. And um, well, that was in fact a good experience. Uh, one circuit that I made was this. That was not very well uh, amplifying. Approximately uh, 0.5 watts, but you can make it, it works, and only one PMP transistor is necessary to drive a loudspeaker with that op amp circuit on, say, 0.5 watt. It works, but I was not satisfied, so I tried to make a kind of class B amplifier. Uh, of course, with a class B amplifier, we know that the current that it takes uh, depends on the input level. And I've made that circuit here in practice. Uh, the PD139, the PD140, complementary end stage. The emitters are connected together and they send the um, amplified audio signal out via this capacitor of say 20, uh, 2200 microfarad to this loudspeaker box. It's a broadband loudspeaker, uh, has a very good characteristic and this is more or less the circuit that I've published earlier. I have made some adaptations. I used here a 10k potentiometer at the input. Uh, 0 0.47 microfarad capacitor to the input of the op amp chip. And a 10k potentiometer here as a volume control. And a 100k resistor to safeguard a the circuit when you connect it for instance to an um, the loudspeaker output of an iPhone or whatever their impedance is often very low and I don't want to damage uh, the loudspeaker output of an iPhone or another uh, smartphone anyway here is the music source and regarding the input, 
the schematic is here, that 100 ohm resistor, 10k. And at the output of the amplifier, perhaps it's interesting to tell, uh, when you operate a loudspeaker on very long loudspeaker wires, the amplifier can start to oscillate because of uh, back coupling, uh, stray capacitance, etc., etc. And that's the reason why I mounted here a 22 ohms resistor. But in many circuits, old school uh, amplifier circuits, you see this at the output of the transistor stage. You have a resistor of say 100 ohms and a capacitor. So this combination also has the property um, that it can prevent oscillations. And furthermore, perhaps not very relevant in this case, when you want to stabilize a transistor that it doesn't start to oscillate, connect a small capacitor of say 50 picofarad between the base and the collector and also here, but that of course is also valid, is all, uh, only valid in audio circuits, for high F circuits. Uh, it could be a disaster to raise the stray capacitance or the natural capacitance between the pins, the electrodes of a transistor. So let's see what uh, we can hear and see now. Uh, at the moment we look at 20 kilohertz on the oscilloscope at the output of the output capacitor. So a pure waveform I send in that waveform with this Farnell frequency generator. And uh, okay, let's go to a lower So here you can see that on this frequency it amplifies properly. That is uh, 2000, it was 2000 Hz. And now we go to 200 Hz. Good amplification, no distortion visible. So, and now to 20 Hz, this is 20 Hz, and I think we can conclude that the frequency characteristic of this amplifier is pretty, and also it has a very pleasant sound. Uh, the circuit takes approximately 75 milliampere. At 12 volts, it only works on 12 volts. On 18 volts, I want to demonstrate that what happens. So a sudden current starts to flow. So 12 volt is the best uh, voltage to supply it. Uh, it takes a tiny current, not much. Um, and let's listen to the sound. of that um, amplifier. I have to find my wiring. Uh, take some time, sorry for that. Uh, well, yes. Here is the wire that I use, that I want to use. Here is the crocodile clip. Of course, this amplification is far too high. So let's go to a normal uh, ampli uh, volume level. 
on the scope we see this so no problems no problems with the uh, distortion level etc here that 100 ohms resistor that protects it here the 10k potentiometer volume level here the amplification level that was published in the earlier video and what I want to point out is that these two diodes um, set the voltage drop between these two transistors here voltage drop and that voltage drop is very precise so you need to use in my opinion this silicon diode and also this one to make the circuit properly working and I want to demonstrate what happens when you um, I'm now going to connect to uh, shortcut one diode can see that the, the end transistors are not properly biased and with these two diodes they are properly biased and uh, it takes uh, say 75 milliampere and when I raise the volume can see that the ampere meter the pointer moves out so there is a relation between the input level and the current that the circuit takes so I think it's a class B amplifier but anyway we always have here a kind of preset of 75 milliampere but it has, has also a good um, purpose um, lowering the amplification, sorry, the uh, distortion level. Okay. Now I change the amplification factor of the op amp. You can hear the effect. And furthermore, there's not so much to tell about the circuit. I used the BD139 and the BD140, NPN and PMP, mounted them on a heatsink uh, only for experimental purposes. And I found out that perhaps you have to test that no heatsink is needed as long as the amplifier operates on a small current and on 12 volt. So that's a thing to take in account. The circuit finally once again and I uh, think it's a quite good amplifier with not so much competence. Very easy to make, etc.